Okay, in response to uh, some of the videos of power recently, people have been asking about two things. One is the tool tubes, and I'll do a video on that um, at some point later. And the other is these um, these tanks that I've put on, these auxiliary tanks, um, one on either side, which um, uh, I feel kind of match the white tank, obviously, with the black and white. And I'm just going to go through um, what I did um, to, uh, to make them. So this one is the water container, of the other side is petrol, um, and I'll show you that in a bit, but it's basically symmetrically opposite, this is exactly the same. Um, now, uh, this little tube here, little, uh, little cap here, I can take that off, and um, here what I've done is I've bought, um, I don't know what you call this weighted tube, I've always called it a clonker, but that's probably not the real word for it, um, but that weighted tube drops down to the bottom of the bottom of the tank so that when it's got water in it I can uh, um, I can tighten that up and I've uh, all, all this is is this is a tube off a, off a camelback type um, uh, uh, drinking bladder that I've, I've used in the past for cycling putting on my back so it's with a with a um, I think this is called a, a bite valve I think it's called something like that um, and so all I can do is suck that and once it's, um, what I do is I just, uh, you'll have seen maybe on some of my other videos, um, I just sort of tuck that in up here. So I tuck that in at the side of the, side of the screen there. The tube just comes up here. It means that I can steer without it getting caught or, or damaged. Um, and the, the valve itself just seems to squeeze in quite nicely. Um, in between the the brace on the bars and the main part of the bars um, so that that doesn't doesn't come out even it's just a little bit of force to pull it out so that doesn't come out even when I'm going off-road and whatever um, and that means obviously I can have a drink at any point just either either put it under my helmet or normally I just kind of open the visor and drop it in through the top have a little drink and then pop it back there what I hadn't realized um, why it would be so useful would be was to um, was to use it for, for uh, general drinking water and stuff. So um, many uses. You'll have seen on the Himalayan base camp video where um, I was explaining about it, but it didn't really come out properly. Um, so um, once the water has gone round there, so long as the, the, the teat, um, which is on the end of here, I think it's called a teat, where once, once water has reached there, um, it'll work by siphon action. Um, so actually, um, you'll have seen on, maybe on the Himis in Derbyshire, video that <laughs> that um, links up there that uh, this tee this blue bit fell off while I was riding and I ended up dropping a trail of water all the way along I had four liters of water all the way along the trail <laughs> um, so that's why I'm wandering get round going my teeth fell off so I had to get another one um, but that's just the bite valve or bite tee um, and um, so it's it's a uh, it's a siphon action and once once it's here I can just take that off and this will close or open but if it's open, water will come out of there like a little tap, and you, you saw me getting rid of my helmet hair, um, so that's good for that. Whenever I stop, because my hair, hair just goes flat, I tend to, if I'm gonna be stopping for a little while, just put a bit of water in it. Um, and um, I also used it a lot whilst camping, just to, just to I'd, I'd put a pan underneath there and uh, dribble, dribble it full of water, um, and then I can, uh, cook with it and five litres turned out to be almost exactly the right amount for brushing my teeth, um, making my porridge, making my coffee, drinking water and all the kind of water you need in a, in a day really, a bit of washing water so again for washing just take the teeth off uh, and um, hands under there, a bit of water, uh, wash my face, whatever uh, armpits, whatever I'm going to do, I mean to be honest in those last two trips I had a shower pretty much every day anyway because I was on campsites. Um, the one time I didn't was when I was wild camping and I was thinking about going in the um, going in the uh, in the lake there, but the weather was miserable, so I didn't. Um, right, so let's get into detail. So this this literally is just a camelback tube. Um, I took the cap, the, um, the these one of these caps um, that came with the with the tank there. I don't know why I've got spares. I don't know if they came with the tank or not, but I seem to have a couple of spares knocking about. Um, and um, this this is the bit for um, for just an ordinary petrol thing, um, which uh, I had knocking around somewhere. I couldn't tell you where I got it from, just with a weight on the end and a hole in the bottom of it. Okay, um, the 
strap is just um, some webbing. I bought this about 20 years ago when I was in Australia because um, I was going across the centre of Australia and I did something similar but I had them on the back just but I just used ordinary petrol tanks one on each side um, one for water one for fuel um, and again I had a tube but I didn't have anything fancy like this I just had a tube so that I didn't dehydrate bizarrely what I found was I'd ride all day and <laughs> and just be continually drinking and then still never stop for a pee it was that hot you didn't feel that hot because even though it reached I think 52 degrees on the hottest day because it's so dry you don't you don't sweat but you do feel hot right okay so that strap just is a strap with just um one of those kind of um webbing buckles on the end of it there um so that's all that is um the what i've done here is i've just put a, a screw that i can tighten by hand i'll show you in a second so this is a paramotor auxiliary fuel tank five litre tank so if you want to do a search i'll put a link in the bottom just to um, one place you can get them I think but um, I'm guessing there are numerous places and different prices probably get them off eBay or something or any other tank but um, it seems to work quite well uh, so that is a, um, a paramotor 5 litre auxiliary fuel tank um, on the back here I put a bit of velcro on there but um, I don't know if you can see that there's a there's a bonded screw bonded inside there if I pull this velcro no I can't um, so there's a bonded screw and then And then I've just got this screw here, which obviously. So obviously that just fits into there and I can tighten it up with some washers on there. Um, and I can tighten that up. And what I've done is drilled a hole through here. I've also covered it in Velcro um, for two reasons. One is the Velcro is like a third way of helping to hold the thing in place. And if I want to turn it back into its original I can just uh, pop these on with velcro and it's basically back to the original look um, so that's there um, these are actually rubberized in some way which um, I hadn't realized until I took them off you've got to be a bit careful taking them off because um, I've slightly damaged this one bending it as I took it off I think if you're very careful with a pallet knife you should be able to get them off fairly cleanly they're only glued on so that is my Royal Enfield badges don't even bother trying to ask me to buy these because I'm keeping them in case I ever sell the bike. Um, and then here, this is just some uh, plumber's insulation that I just put around um, just to just to give a bit more of a um, a, uh, a less abrasive uh, barrier between the frame and the and the tank. So that's how it's all fits on. Obviously, I've drilled a hole through there. I did make the mistake of not putting a block of wood behind there, and I don't know if you can see. I went and went and uh, nicked my tank but a little bit of nail varnish on there and it's just it'll stop it rusting obviously I've painted that hole um, the one on the one on this side is exactly the same um, I've actually got red caps on here I don't like the red caps as much but I lost the black one twice first time got um, found by Sam um, um, but uh, and I put it back on but the second time I just left it loose while I was riding and it must have just come loose and fallen off and because I got the red one of those on I put a red one of those on as well um, but anyway that one's for fuel I didn't think I'd have to use the fuel one in this country at all but it turns out on my way to um, Banky Barn I ran out of fuel I knew I'd I'd got to I'd got to about 50 um, fuel, uh, 55 or so miles um, over you know when the F sign comes on on your Himalayan and I'd heard that you can get up to about 75 anyway I only got up to 65 and it ran out um, but I was near a pub with a massive car park and lots of people having lunch so I, I wandered around to everyone that I could find and said said would you be willing to um, to <laughs> uh, would you be willing to to uh, to tell me some petrol but nobody had any unfortunately so um but then one of the people that i'd asked she came back and she said look have you got a container i said oh yes i have so i gave her this container took it off and uh, and some money and she went off and um and and came back with some petrol which was good because i'd given her my money in my tank she might never come back but she seemed like a nice person so thank you to that anonymous person whoever you were it was great and she came back with with um five quid's worth of petrol in there which was brilliant um so this one's held on in exactly the same way um, it's a different screw just because that's what I had available I think these this screw comes with the tank but I might be wrong it might not um, and again the strap that goes around it so that is um, 
the auxiliary tanks. Um, I'll try and put links in the description to um, to the items. Now it, it might not be um, the cheapest place. I'll just go for whichever one I find first on a Google search. Um, but um, but what I'll do is I'll I'll put um, I'll put links in uh, in the description to to where you can buy the various items. Oh, the last thing is the stickers. I just did those on a vinyl cutter. Uh, if you haven't got access to a vinyl cutter, I appreciate most people probably haven't, then um, you could probably send that off somewhere and, and get somebody to just cut those stickers. I just took the shape off the internet and, uh, and then cut it on the vinyl cutter. Um, so if you, um, oh, and finally, finally, I've just put a little bit of foam over the, um, the spare intake so that um, so so that water and stuff and debris is not going to fall in through that small hole but it does mean that it's not going to end up getting um, getting a vacuum inside there and so I'm going to still be able to get water and whatever out. I did find when I was using the siphon element, the siphon feature for a tap, I had to loosen that this a little bit just so that enough air was getting in quickly for it to to work properly which is probably why I ended up losing the cap because I didn't tighten it down afterwards um, I think what I'm going to do is just attach that to one of these little um, little things with a with a bit of wire or, or something I'll, I'll work something out okay I hope you enjoyed that I'm going to just put it back together now yeah I figured this strap would just give extra security if I come off which I have done numerous times and landed on these tanks. I'll tell you the other good thing about them, they stop you breaking your indicators and uh, seem to cause no damage to the tank whatsoever whenever to these tanks when I've fallen on them. There are videos on the internet of people driving trucks over these things. I can't remember the name of the plastic, but whatever kind of plastic it is, it's super rugged. There we go. Job done. Okay. Um, in response to a lot, a couple of the, I just quite like the stickers. I thought. Okay, so right, the first one I'm going to talk about is these, the uh, the these liquid carriers, whatever whatever you want to call them.